Welcome to the Hockey Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. My name is Talon Jenkins, joined by our hosts. We got Ryan Gilbert and Joel Meyer. Gentlemen, how the hell are we doing tonight? Doing doing better today. And so I saw a very rainy day here in Philadelphia. But I mean, the John Tortorella press conference today just brightened my whole day out. 15 minutes of just pure gold from him, taking responsibility, calling out the team. You know, I, I, my, my confidence is back on here. Yesterday, I, I recorded Broad Street Hockey. My confidence was not there, but I, I'm back now. Oh, yeah, that press conference is gold, man. Like you said, absolutely loved it. Just following the grenade, just associating himself with the team. It's not their fault. It's my fault for not getting them ready. Socket has been doing that for like the past two months. Hasn't been working out as well. Hopefully it works out better for Tortorella for going forward. Hopefully they make the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, doing okay over here. Went to lunch with my dad. Got into, uh, you know, some some boozy discussions about, you know, like the, the gold stock and world politics. Like, oh. uh, Al-Qaeda and, uh, you know, the Hell situation yeah. and the Gaza Strip and all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just got home. But I had a sober moment this morning, though, because you know what? <laughs> for the first time in a while, when I put it in my bet for tomorrow, the book didn't fucking limit me. <laughs> that's a humiliating moment because like yeah, this, guy, this fucking shit. i know <laughs> so this guy's fucking losing let's let him bet more give us, give us your fucking money please <laughs> uh, so yeah it's, it's a good thing in terms of i can bet more but it, will it be a good thing we'll see if i can fucking turn shit around but Bloody yeah that's, that's an embarrassing moment it's like just like uh that, that's gross but hopefully the last couple of weeks of the season we can we can get some money back and uh end this season on a hot run because i'm looking forward to playoffs i'm like i'm going i'm like i'm not like the uh the marathon sprinter like we're we're, we're we're in the lead we're in the lead but we're just like limping towards the end that's what i'm doing i'm limping just looking for the finish line so we can get across it without the uh, fucking dying on the way there you see the videos where like the guys like cramp up on the final stretch and their bodies like fucking giving out on them and shit that's what joel said but you know what you're gonna have me running right behind you, and I'm gonna stop before I'm just gonna pick you up, and we're gonna cross this finish line together, baby. Because that's how we roll around here. Hell yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, oh, Joel, your conversations with your father are much different than my conversations with my father. I will tell you that. All my dad talk about whenever we're together or on the phone or whatever is literally just Leafs and golf and food <laughs> and like cooking. That's the only things that the three of us talk. And I love every goddamn minute of it. Shout out pops. Love it. It's absolutely fantastic. But yeah, the amount of times we talked about Al Qaeda is probably like under, under one. Like we, I don't think that's ever happened. So <laughs> good on. Well, we, we spent a lot of time on a uh, Moto GP though. Like we we're talking about like differences mm-hmm. between F1 and Moto GP. Like he Let's loves see. motorcycle racing out there in Europe. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a hell of a sport though. Like they, they crash all the fucking Ooh. time. Like, it's more interesting than F one, I think. If uh, if it was only broadcast uh, in Canada here more often, it'd be a bit uh, mm-hmm. of an interesting follow. We got like a Mister Meyer on the pod. It seems like some, yeah, uh, some we should do Mister Meyer and uh, Timmy. Hell yeah, they'd be unreal, dude. Uh, my dad would just be mad talking about the Leafs, and if anybody said anything bad, he'd just fucking unload off them. So I don't know if you guys wanted that, but where do you think I get it from? But um, I was watching. Uh, I was showing Jess some videos of a uh, drag racing. Like the other day, because she just didn't even know it was a thing. I'm like, these guys just strap themselves onto rockets. And I forgot to do like the motorcycle ones where these guys are just like laying down fucking flat, like Superman on these, yeah. literally on these jet. And they just, oh, it's unbelievable, man. Um, quickly, I want to say too, I, I watched rugby today, for like the first time ever. And like, I can, I can fuck with rugby, I think. It was pretty cool. I picked up on the rules. It's, it's kind of a fun sport to get into, man. So look out for yeah. that. Got a lot of Australian friends that are always talking about it. Plus, a South African guy. Like every time we get drunk together, we got to show the highlights of when South Africa beat England in the in the World Cup of Rugby. Like, <laughs> like get the fuck out of you. Eventually, just like, okay, if you're gonna do that, I'm gonna show you the LSU highlights when they beat uh, Clemson <laughs> in the 2019 and Natty Championship. So uh, we just go back the glory back. years. Yeah, but rugby's <laughs> always on, like the Irish bars or whatever. So yeah. No, that's cool. Um, all right, let's get into the chair. Everybody go check out the Sports Gaming Podcast Network website. That's the place to be. Tons of stuff in the world of sports. We got uh, nine games in the NHL tomorrow. We're going to bang through those nice and quick. Uh, soccer, I imagine, is doing its thing. Basketball, tennis. Julie, isn't it a big tennis week this week or something? 
No. No? no? Okay. I just so, thought maybe. We're moving into clay season, <laughs> European uh, stuff, uh, prepping for the, the, the uh, French Open in May. We'll, we'll, we'll get back mm. in track in uh, about a month and a half. I see. Hell yeah. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, that that's the thing. Soccer, baseball, Ryan. Baseball, what's good? Baseball is a thing. I'm, I'm I'm not focused, but if you want some baseball takes, check out the uh, MLB Gambling Podcast. Subscribe to those guys over there, Munaf and, and Mal and whoever else. Do a great job of that. For I think I, I think I saw they had like a, a futures bet that somehow cashed already. I'm not sure what it was, but I saw a tweet about that. So make sure you subscribe to them. They're doing a, a fantastic job over there. Dialed in. I, I used to show these guys out a lot of time. The NASCAR podcast, those guys just pick winners out their asshole. It seems like every day I see these guys, or every week, they're just absolutely crushing it. So shout out to them as well. A uh, ton of stuff in the world of sports. You can find all that information there. Be sure to go check it out. Check out all the articles everybody's doing. Um, check out uh, what else is going on? Uh, the Discord and the other shows. But most of all, shout out to all our friends and pals in the Discord. I, I feel like there's some ground built today. You know, we, we laid the framework to get back on track where people stop hating each other's guts. So, you know, it, it's been an absolutely great day in the Discord. Discord. That'll last about two weeks for the playoffs. Start. Yeah, just in time for the playoffs. <laughs> I, I the, the Penguins are not making the playoffs. Stop it. Stop it. I, I honestly, I bet it. I bet a hundred bucks on it at six to one. So I'm all in got, on the. Pens. I got a hundred bucks to miss with you, one to one. Yeah, I know exactly, right? But I'm just saying it's feasible, Jolie. There's a chance, right? There's a chance. Absolutely. Like look at the teams ahead of them. The Capitals are floundering. The Flyers are floundering. The Red Wings are shit, uh, and that's it. The Penguins, mm-hmm. if they just keep Islanders playing these games. Too. They play them. Islanders. They play those three teams, though. The Islanders, Caps, and Detroit in the last seven games. So those are going to be big. There's a chance it happens, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did not say the Islanders. But, yeah, you're right. The Islanders are in the mix as well. But the Penguins, you know, they're, they're playing the best hockey right now. So if they keep winning, like, this is what I said in the Discord, too. Like, it took a minor miracle for the Penguins to miss last time. What if it takes a minor miracle for them to make to this it. time? That's the cocky gods doing the karma thing. And uh, getting them back in when they shouldn't be, and uh, after they remove them when they should. Them. Love that. Uh, so yeah, Discord's absolutely sweet. If you want to get in there, reach out to myself or Ryan on Twitter. We'll be sure to point you in the right direction. Or you can reach out to the HGP Twitter account, social media assistant producer. We'll get you in there. He's a beauty. He'll let you know everything that you need to know. Uh, or what you can do is you can go uh, to the bar, and if you see Joel sitting there with your dad discussing fucking ISIS or some crazy shit, you can just <laughs> walk up to them and be like, yeah. You know, there's uh, the, the the influence from the Iraqis over, over Iran and then everything. I don't fucking know, but they'll be sure to tell you something and it'll be a good time. And then in that conversation, somehow they'll tell you how to get into the Discord, baby. Allahu Akbar. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, I, Ranger, yeah. Rangers Devils just had a fucking line, a line brawl off the What? Already? Let's go. Yeah, so Let's go. that's <laughs> sick. I'm saying there's, yeah. there's at least there's at least two uh, ejections. Probably Rempy's involved there, but yeah, that's good to that's see. Awesome. Hopefully, McDermott that's, that's plays uh, fights Rempy this time. I love that because yeah. that's just basically the, the Rangers submitting their starting lineup and being like, "We're starting shit. We're putting Rempy out," and the Devils are like, "Fuck that. We're gonna match it." I love that's coaches saying, "I hate your guts." I love that yeah. so much. Yeah, Rempy McDermott went at it. Uh, Miller's going out with with Marino. Awesome. Nice. I, saw, I saw Laviolette and uh, Green were yelling at each other. Dude, like Tal- talent, Tal- and I have the Leafs game on. I think, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I'm like, there's none of that. Yeah, but you no. know what, man? The the anger in hockey's coming back a little bit. Have you guys noticed it? Like this year, oh, yeah. it's been fucking electric, and I am so here for it. It's everything oh, yeah. that I've ever, ever wanted, and and it hasn't taken away from the skill side of the game too, right? There's, we're seeing more goals these days than we ever have in the past like 15, 20 years. It's just it's just such a beautiful mix. I'm it's lovely. Yeah, man. Uh, oh, all right, let's make some ads here. One more, one more note. One, one final note. The whole fighting after clean hit thing has got to go away. Yeah, like, I agree. Like hundred percent. That's I, just because it's, it's a clean big hit, hit. Yeah, yeah. Just let him go. Yeah. Well, you don't have to fight yeah, about it. Good. If it's a dirty if hit, okay, fight. But if, if somebody crushes hit, you and you don't like it, this is what we were always taught as kids: take a fucking number. Like, take their yeah. fucking number, catch them later in the game, and fuck them up. Like, I'm fucking up my cat right now, for Christ's sakes. He's being a dick, but I just unplug my oh. headset, so I can't hear him. Well, he always fights dirty, so, so uh, yeah, <laughs> fair game. He, he does. Um, all right, let's bang some ads out here, and let's get into yeah, this bad boy. Let's do it. Of course, uh, Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that is U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Uh, peer-to-peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. They got group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head history, user profiles, fan groups, and more. You can bet on anything with a verifiable outcome. Cut offers lower, vague, and fully customizable odds. You can submit your own bets there to create 
Cut also handles, handles the payment side of things, so you never have to chase anyone down for money. So download Cut today in the App Store or at cut.com. That's K-U-T-T. Use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Sign up today with promo code HGP at underdogfantasy.com or in the app store and register with that code HGP to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick special. Must be 18 years or older and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 100 4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. All right. We're going to move into the first game of the docket. Or sorry, let's get it. What am I even doing here? Gentlemen, we got a nine-game slate set for Wednesday, April 4th. Ryan, I'm sorry. Are you ready to rock and roll here or what? Oh, yeah. See, I'm sorry I almost missed out on that. I would have been I would have been I, I was a gutter roll actually. I, I, I had to do it up for you after after not after trying to try and keep Ryan it up. Ryan Gilbert, noted cannibal corpse fan. We love to see it. <laughs> um all right. Uh first game on the docket here at the 7 p.m. time slot. We got the New York Islanders against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Game itself is in Columbus here. Islanders on the money line sitting at minus 185. Uh jackets on the money line at plus 154. Over under sitting at six. Over paying off minus 115. The under minus 105. Um, love the Isles in this game here, man. It was a close one they had last night playing up against uh, Chicago. They ended up coming through and getting that done, which was good to see. Um, but the teams, the teams clicking a little bit lately. Man, two game winning streak. They're better at home than they are on the road. Actually, no, they're shit. They they suck everywhere, I guess. But you know what? They're still in contention for a playoff spot here. These these, these games mean a lot to you. And I'm sorry, I'm just not sold on Columbus. Um, they've been keeping games relatively close, though. Uh, one thing worth noting here: Columbus has been absolutely terrible when it comes to division games this year. They're five fourteen and three. Uh, the Islanders are nine seven and five, so not that much better. But it doesn't get worse than Columbus. So I'm going to take the Isles here at minus one eighty five. Um, over under in this game, Tuffy. I don't really have a good look either way. I guess I would kind of lean towards the under because neither team is really proficient at scoring goals, but uh, both teams haven't been great this year when it comes to defending. With that being said, we do know that the goaltending for the Islanders can show up here. So I would lean towards the under and then give me the Isles. Yeah, the only way you can look here is the Isles. Minus 185 might be a bit steep, but also Columbus is just... I know they won back-to-back games against Pittsburgh and Colorado, but... Past 10 games, they have the worst expected goal share, less than 40%. I mean, Chicago, second worst at almost 44%. They're beat up right now. they got an injury bug. A few guys questionable with an illness. I saw Boone Jenner uh, reveal today their son was stillborn, so so that sucks for them. Hark goes out to oh. them. A uh, bunch of guys there. Boquist still out. Ch- Chanikov out. Like, yeah, the, the Blue Jackets are just waiting for the offseason. Islanders are still pushing for that playoff spot. So yeah, Islanders minus 185. Maybe it maybe a regulation play, but they go to overtime so often that I, I can't really trust them to do that. So yeah, Islanders minus 185. It's probably worth laying the juice. Ryan, way to bum us out there to start the show. What the fuck? That's what I'm known for. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not gonna go there not gonna extrapolate <laughs> on, on that um but uh yeah the uh calendars probably shouldn't be minus 185 to any team we, we saw them just barely beat chicago when they're at home and needed to win the game uh mind you they were on the back-to-back and all that but still they, they were the better team still against the flyers um you know about their problems going on and whatnot yeah blue jackets two two wins in a row i mean I mean, the Avalanche, I don't know what, what was going on in that game. I didn't see a second of it. But, uh, yeah, they, they took care of the Avalanche. No problem there. I mean, I, when it was like 3 nothing, I'm like, okay, they're, they're really testing their uh, go up and uh, lose the game theory. But uh, no one, <laughs> they did not to blow that one. Uh, but, yeah, for this one, it's uh, probably fair, I guess. Minus 25, you got a lot of the, the desperation angle for the Islanders making playoffs baked into this line. So I'm not touching that. Maybe lean to the over six, but. Fuck, uh, I got nothing going on for this game. Uh, I think the Islanders win, but minus one eighty-five reflects that, and the total it, it means nothing to me. So I got I got absolutely nothing for this game. Just uh, I hope the Blue Jackets steal this one because we need to get the Islanders out of the town um, so the Flyers can make the playoffs or the Penguins. Yeah, Islanders to win from behind plus two fifty-five. That would be my play. Mm. For this one. Mm. Yes, that if anything before the game, I would play that. 
All right, moving down to the 7 p.m. time slot here. We have the Florida Panthers against the Ottawa Senators. Game itself is in auto here. Florida on the money line sitting at minus 162. Uh, Sends on the money line at plus 130. Over under sitting at six and a half. Overpaying off plus 114. The under minus 135 here. Dude, the Panthers got to get their fucking shit together. It's been kind of ugly as of late. What are they in their past 10? They're 2 7 and 1, which is definitely not great. They're coming off losses to, I believe, Montreal and Toronto, their last two on this Eastern road trip that they're on here. Um, I think they got to get it done against the Sens. I know the Sens have been playing good this time of year. We've talked about this a lot here, but there's no way that Florida loses to Ottawa, Toronto, and Montreal in a three-game span. And then plus, after this game on the weekend, I'm pretty sure they have Boston, which, you know, is a pretty significant game. Both these teams are trying to win the division here. They want to get stuck playing a wild card team uh, as opposed to, you know, maybe the Leafs in the first round. Um, although maybe not, because they might have to match up against Tampa, and the Bolts are pretty good, but um regardless here i'm taking the panthers at minus 162 i think they show up for this game as a bit of a tune-up game against the or with the bruins coming up and then over under six and a half it looks like the lines lean towards the under at minus 135 i'm going against that man i'm going on the over at plus 114 uh the Suns have been scoring some goals lately we know that they have the talent to do it they're playing good hockey and uh even florida even in some of their losses Obviously not so much against Montreal, but even in the Leafs, they were scoring goals late to kind of help push it and bring it back here. I think this one goes over the number at 6.5 and plus 114. So a bit of a risk here, but I kind of like that at plus money. Yeah, I'm going going with the Sens here, plus 130. They're still on their uh, late season push. Did, did lose in Minnesota, but outshot them 32-20, to 20, lost 3-2 there to break their five-game winning streak. Panthers here just have not been good on the road. Lost there in Montreal last night. Going to be third game in four nights, fourth game in six nights here, I believe. And uh, Verhage's out. Kachuk is questionable with an illness, and Ekblad is questionable with an undisclosed injury. So if either of those players can't go, Ekblad or Kachuk, I think it's even better for the Sens. Uh, Chabot could be back for this one for Ottawa. Uh, So, yeah, Sens here at home, trying to go out with some pride. Plus 130, I think, is worth a play. And I would lean to the under six and a half at minus 135. Ottawa's been playing a few straight under games here, getting it under control, but that's more of a lean. Just the only bet is the Senators. So we have more players in and out of the lineup for the Panthers, huh? Good thing they have a, a lot of practice time. We're not doing in this, Joel. We're not doing this, you asshole. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the Panthers have some some troubles, no doubt, on, on all ends of the ice. Really, the goaltendings failed them. Defense is failing. I, I don't know who it was, but the absolute gimme to uh, one of the least players there for that turnover was one of the worst plays I've seen all season, let alone from one of the uh, you know, premier playoff teams. But uh, absolutely brutal play by the Panthers lately. We need to see Paul Maurice get this, this group dialed in. Yeah, Ryan is right. The Senators deserve to win that game against the Wild. Um yeah, the Panthers, though, I, I think that they get it done. I mean, minus 155 against the Senators. This team is a lot better than that. I think they get things done. I think they get things figured out. I mean, something's got to give here. Like, this team is too talented to just keep losing these games. I know that they're tired, you know, the long season of uh, playing these physical hockey games. But at this point, against a, a weak, soft sense team, I think the Panthers can bully them and finally collect some kind of momentum going back towards the last uh, few games of the season. So give me the Panthers here and, uh, I don't know. Total is, is kind of a mystery here with with uh, a Sens team uh, that are a bit more of an under team lately. But um, yeah, nothing for the total. I bet the Panthers money line. That's all I got for this one. All right, heading down to the 7 p.m. time slot here. We got the Boston Bruins against the Carolina Hurricanes. Game itself is in Carolina here. A Boston the money line sitting at plus one twenty four. Canes on the money line at minus one forty eight. Over under sitting at five and a half. Over paying off minus one fifteen. The under minus one oh five. Uh, do to do Ryan. I'm gonna throw this one your way, buddy. What do you how do you think this one's gonna shake out here? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the Hurricanes here getting up to close to minus 150, might be a bit steep, but they've been playing good hockey recently. One, uh, three of their past four, they're they're eight of their past 10 here. One of those losses was a shootout loss in Washington on a back to back. One of the losses when it was in Pittsburgh, they outshot them by, by double there, about so. Back-to-back shutout wins. Boston at the end of a road trip here. Sixth game on the road. They've won back-to-back in Washington and Nashville. But the Nashville game was close. 3-0. One empty netter. I think all three goals were in the third period there. So you got to go with Carolina, I think. Boston, you know, they're improving their home record. twenty Or away record, 21-8-9. and nine, So 21-17 and 17 on the year. But Carolina's just, I think they're rolling right now. They're still battling for that, that top spot. 
in the Metro, even though they're a few points back of the rags. But if they get a few wins here, they can they can string things together. But my favorite bet here would be the under five and a half at minus 105. Both of these teams in playoff mode. Carolina not allowing a lot of expected goals or goals at all. Boston being the same way. So love the under five and a half here with a lean to the Canes. <laughs> Corgana just messaged me 156 penalty minutes in the first five of the Devils Rangers game. <laughs> Holy shit! We got the, we got the wrong game on down. I know. What are we <laughs> doing, Jolie? Fuck. <laughs> uh, anyway, for the Bruins Hurricanes, uh, yeah, Bruins are you know they're, they're, they're living by the uh, skin of the skin of their teeth here by um what are the fucking saying is I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's not a, not a, not a sayings guy here. <laughs> you got it. You're good. All right, we're good. We're good. All right, Bruins here. Yeah, they're, they're living by the. By the uh, the knife's edge, let's say uh, they're, they're living on the uh, the razor's edge. Um, anyway, Bruins are not playing great hockey, but they're winning some games, which is how you want to play towards the end of the regular season. You just want to get the results. Built some momentum into the playoffs, but that said, Hurricanes are playing better hockey right now. They're getting some goaltending, better all up and down the ice. Uh, yeah, minus one forty eight, I think, is still pretty cheap in the Hurricanes. Give me the Hurricanes all day long. Lean to the under, but uh, not not strong on that. I know both teams are typically under teams, but uh, yeah, Bruins goaltending has been a bit hit or miss lately. So just a Hurricanes money line for myself. Yeah, I'm with you. I like Carolina a lot in this game, dude. They're just absolutely phenomenal at home with the 25 9 and 4 record. We know that. We don't got to dive too much into it. Bruins, when you look at their numbers, not as proficient on the road as they have been at home. They're 21 8 and 9, which sounds good, but realistically, that's like a 21 and 17 record. Uh, on the money line, on the road. So uh, I love the Canes at home here. I think that they get it done. Julie mentioned it, and Ryan did too. They're playing some phenomenal hockey right now. They're 8-1-1 one, and one in their past 10. Bruins struggling a little bit. 6-4-0 oh in their last 10, which isn't, isn't bad, you know, but they've been picking up their socks a little bit lately. Um, the only thing that worries me here, and I, I know you guys talked about it, you know, the Canes have been getting some great goaltending. I understand that, but... There's some uh, there's some there's some skeletons in the closet when it comes to Frederick Anderson against the Boston Bruins. He has never never played great against this Boston team, so that worries me a little bit. I think overall the Canes as a whole are big enough that that's not an issue. They can look past that and get the win here. But with that being said, with the over under set at five and a half, I am absolutely all over the over on this game here. I think we're going to see a couple more goals uh, than we are expecting here, you know? So sometimes you got to take that into consideration, man. You know, the numbers all look great and Freddie's been playing fantastic, but sometimes teams just have a funny way of having your numbers. So the over five and a half is very enticing on this one to me. Big, big top shelf there, right? Eh? Oh, fuck off. I just saw that. That sucks. <laughs> Um, all right, moving down to the 7 p.m. time slot here. We have the Pittsburgh Penguins against the Washington Capitals. I love this matchup so much. You always love Crosby versus Ovi. That's awesome. Game itself is in Washington here. Pittsburgh on the money line at minus 112. Caps on the money line at minus 108. Over under sitting at six. Over under paying off minus 110. Uh, Jolie guy, tossing this one your way, buddy. What do we got here? Yeah, we got two teams in uh, different situations. I think the Capitals have been uh, living lucky for the past month or two, just just getting these close wins and all that. But when they lose, they lose by margin. So if you want to go with the Penguins minus one and a half plus two fifty, I'm okay with that. But for myself, I'm, I, I laid uh, the Penguins here, no problem. They're 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 still alive. I mean, they're they're right in the mix there with how poorly the other uh, contenders, quote unquote, contenders in the. Uh, in the East are, are vying for this um, this wild card spot are, are faring they're, they're losing games that they're, they're you know even when they're getting to re- uh, end of overtime or into overtime they're still losing these games so yeah Penguins are still alive because uh, the Capitals Red Wings Islanders Flyers they're all kind of stumbling about and the Penguins maybe they have a chance maybe they have some hope like my whole argument for betting the Penguins under uh, their point total after the trade deadline was people were kind of depressed because they thought that, that was just giving up the season but now that they've won a couple games, we get some good teams too. That they they got some momentum going, and the other teams are not taking advantage of their positions. So the uh, the route is laid, the, the the path is paved for the Penguins mm-hmm. to make the playoffs here. So uh, I think the Penguins have a lot of more momentum. The Capitals think the Penguins are a much better team. They should be much better in the standings than they are right now, and the Capitals should be a lot lower. So give me the Penguins all day long here. Love that. I also I also like the under six. Think that this is like a, a pseudo playoff game here um with a more competitive affair like uh, take fewer chances especially on the uh, the capital side they probably just want to get the point at least to uh you know 
negate the Penguins' chances to to make a, a rush up the standings. So I like the under six, but uh, definitely like the Penguins. This is my biggest bet in like uh, about a month. <laughs> Right, yeah, I, I'd probably lean lean the Penguins that way there. Not not too strongly. Puck line could be a good play, plus 215. They do tend to win by margin. I mean, they came back from 3-1 in the third period to win 6-3 on a back-to-back there in New Jersey. Can't trust the Caps right now. So, yeah, Penguins puck line plus 215. It's either going to be a blowout for the Penguins or an overtime game, so maybe take the draw as well there, sprinkle it plus 350. But the Penguins are making the playoffs. They got the Caps, Lightning at Toronto, Red Wings, Bruins, Predators at the Islanders. There, there's no easy game there. They're all fighting for something. So, you know, they might win a few more, but they're not going all the way. What did we learn about the Penguins last year? They don't want an easy game to get into the playoffs, baby. They want it hard. They want it physical. They can't beat Chicago. They can't beat Columbus, but they can beat the fucking good teams, baby. So that would be my that would be my contrary opinion to that. But yeah, I love the Penguins in this game here too. I'm with Julie minus one twelve here, man. The uh, the Caps are zero and three in their last three games, not looking too particularly good either. I mean. I don't know. There's something to be wanted there for desire. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm just trusting my boy, dude. I'm a I'm a I'm a Crosby dick sucker. I always have been. He's my fucking guy. I'm all over him. Um, so I'm going with the Pens here, minus one twelve. They've been playing some good hockey as of late too. Like I know we talk about there. They're pretty thin on the back end. Latang hasn't really, you know. He's kind of, he's came back down to earth a lot the past two or three seasons or so, especially this year. Carlson hasn't really looked like anything special, but I think they got enough to get it done against Washington. Uh, over under, I love the over in this game, man. I think Lindgren's let in. I want to say it was like thirteen goals in his past three games or some shit like that. Playing against some offensively minded teams, obviously with the Leafs and that nature too. But still, uh, I, I think that this game goes over the number a bit here, especially with that six. I absolutely love that play. So. I'm going to be taking uh, the Penguins and the over. I kind of like the Penguins in regulation, too. I think it's at, like, plus 130 I saw. Um, what did I see? Four of their past five wins have been in regulation. So they uh, they seem to get the job done lately within the time slot here. One potential issue here with the Penguins is that Jari, Nedeljkovic started both halves of the back-to-back. Jari's still questionable with an illness. So could see some fatigue there with if he has to start a third game in four nights. That's true. It's a good point. He's looked good, but you're right. Wear and tear is a thing, right? So. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Um, okay, moving down to the 7 p.m. time slot here. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning against the Montreal Canadiens, Le Habitat, Montreal, Le Bleu Blanc et Rouge. The game itself is in Le Bel Center. Uh, Tampa Bay on the money line sitting at minus 170. Habs on the money line at plus 142. Over under sitting at 6.5 plus 102. The under minus 122 here. Lightning on the second out of a back to back. Obviously, they're playing the Leafs right now. They are up 1 0 in the first period here. Brody took a penalty, so they're probably going to go up 2 0. Um, <laughs> Yeah, fuck, dude. I actually haven't. The Habs haven't really been on my radar the past couple of games, so I'm not too sure how they've been playing. I know the Tampa has been strong, firing yeah. lately. But you know how they're, they're they're the guys are, are doing their points, right? Like Slavkovsky and that's Suzuki. all I want. That's the only thing I look at. That's the only <laughs> thing I'm tracking is Slavkovsky, Suzuki, and fucking Caulfield right now. All right, but uh, I'm seeing Caden Primo is confirmed for this game. He's his numbers are actually decent this year. He's got an eight seven and two record, which isn't great, but a two point seven five goals against average, point nine one three save percentage here. Um, Jonas Johansson, I see he's out, but he's expected to start this game, so I don't know what that means. I guess he's probably not going to play. Uh, who they got up right now? They got Matt Tompkins. Who the hell is Matt Tompkins? He played a couple he, games early. Isn't he that like really tall guy? Yeah, he's 6'4", seventh round pick by the Blackhawks. He's a journeyman, 29 years old here. Uh, he'll probably get the nod for this game. I'm going to lean towards the Lightning here, man, because they still have a bit to play for. There is the world, especially if they win tonight, that they catch the Leafs and get themselves out of a wild card spot. Uh, I think they play Toronto again before the season ends after this. So these are some big points on the table. And something, too, like – over the past couple of years, Tampa has known where they've been slotted in the playoff picture, right? This year, for the first time in a long time, not as much. So I think that for the first time in a while, they're actually playing some meaningful games down the stretch. And they, they want to get the hot hand going heading into the playoffs here. So I'm going to lean Tampa minus 170, um, even on the second night of a back-to-back, over-under in this game. Uh, I'm leaning towards the under because I want Montreal to get zero points for the rest of the year when it comes to goal scoring. And also, I think it's a pretty good look, too. So give me the under. Give me, uh, give me the bolts. Habs have been sneaky good recently. Just beat the uh, Panthers at home five three. They've won four of the past five now against you know Panthers, Flyers, Avalanche, and, and Kraken. There, 
Lightning have been good. We've been praising them, but they're coming off a loss to Detroit, going on the road now. Going to be a back-to-back for them, which you know is is never too great for that. 18-6, 16-3 on the road, so under 500 there on the money line. Habs have been decent. They're building something. You got St. Louis against his former team, so those guys are going to get up for that. So I like the, the Habs here as dogs, plus 142. Plus one, plus one and a half, minus 155. If you want to go with that, uh, I could see them looking look. close as well. But like, I think plus 142 is a good look. And yeah, Caden Primo has been great at home. I mean, he, he had back to back shutouts and then allowed one goal on 30 shots against the Flyers. So love the Habs here and a lean to the under. I agree with Ryan there. I uh, also back in the Canadians. I like them with this situation with the Lightning playing Toronto here. Close, uh, you know, there's a bit of a rivalry game going on after playing each other in the playoffs the past two mm-hmm. seasons. So, yeah, going back to Montreal, the Montreal Canadiens are playing like some of the best hockey in the league, mm-hmm. honestly, right now. They're, they're, they're building some momentum for next season. We'll see if they can make a playoff push. No, <laughs> no way. No, okay. Dom asked me what I should give him for odds for Habs to make the playoffs next year. He wants fucking 12 to 1. I don't know if I want to give no, that to him yet. No. That's what <laughs> no. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Exactly, right? We don't know what they do in the offseason. No chance. Just six, give him the, 6 to uh, 1, 7 to 1 maybe? I offered him 8. I would take yeah. 8. Like, what were the Flyers before? The Flyers were around 10 to 1 before the season, I think. And so the, the Habs can't be worse than that. Uh, I think they're I think they're fucked to be honest with you. I don't think they have a chance, but yeah, well we'll see. We'll we'll keep that in mind. If you if you guys got any ideas in the Discord, be sure to let us know. See, nice little plug there. So yeah, Gary Montreal right. here. Uh, no play on the total. Fuck uh, over six and a half with Matt Tompkins in net potentially. <laughs> and Caden oh, oh yeah, or uh, Jonas Johansson if he uh, suits up, or Vasilevsky on a back to back. I don't think so. So six and a half. I know the Canadians are more of a defensive team this year, which is another sign for their positive progression into a legitimate playoff team. But <laughs> yeah, leaning. Uh, I just put the Canadians here. No, no real feel for the total. Okay. All right, let's move down to the 8 p.m. time slot here. We have the Colorado Avalanche against the Minnesota Wild. What a matchup here. Game itself is in Minnesota. Avs on the money line sitting at minus 170. Wild on the money line at plus 142. Over-under sitting at 6. Overpaying off minus 122. The under plus 102. Uh, Mr. Meyer, take this one away, buddy. What's up here with Colorado and the greatest team in the West, the Minnesota Wild? <laughs> Um, can you even call them a, a team at this point? I mean, they, they just <laughs> they do this every freaking year. They just win enough games to finish in the eight, nine, ten seed every freaking time. So they never get any good draft picks. They're going to be mediocre for the rest of eternity. And uh, yeah, the Avalanche coming off a, lo- a bad loss to the Columbus Blue Jackets. I don't know what was going on. I mentioned that earlier. I didn't watch a second of that game. Um, but yeah, you got to expect them to come back from that one. Minus one seventy. We're, we're, we're getting a bit up there. It's kind of tough to back them now, but uh, if you can find a better price, that's the only way I would go with the Avalanche here. With uh, still competing for the the one seed, the one seed is kind of important in the um, in the West, uh, winning the division at least. I mean, you don't want to, you don't play the Jets. Jets are gonna push the game, push the series to six, seven games. It's gonna be a tough physical series. You don't want to play them so much. So Avalanche have something to fight for here. Plus, they have a history of of just uh, going hard at the end of the season. So. Uh, yeah, I think the Avalanche win this game. The Wild were, were not inspiring against the Senators. They barely won that game. They did not deserve to win that game. Um, yeah, Avalanche here, I think, are the side, but minus one seventy is a big price to play. You gotta, you gotta find some, um, some, some other prices there. So, I like the over six though. Minus one twenty two. I think we'll see a lot of goals in this one. Um, Avalanche goaltending has been a bit better lately, but the offense is still there. The Wild offense is is hit or miss, but their defense is, is kind of hit or miss as well. Um, so yeah, they, I think the Avalanche make this a uh, back and forth affair. We'll get like a five three Avs win here, and no real strong play on the total. I'd probably lean to the under because that's kind of how the way the Wild are playing recently. But it, I do see the Avs winning this one. Minus one seventy is a bit steep. Probably still pay play that minus one sixty right now at FanDuel. If if you're watching live, you can get that. Yeah, the Wild, you know, they beat bad teams and lose to good teams. Since uh, February 27th, they are 8-4-4, four, and four, but their wins have been against San Jose, Arizona, Nashville with the Predators on a back-to-back, Arizona again, Anaheim, Anaheim, San Jose, and Ottawa. Mm-hmm. So all non-playoff teams 
or tired teams. Avs here coming off a, a bad loss in Columbus. Had a two days off now. Get back out of there in Minnesota. So love them here, minus 170, and a lean to the under. Nathan McKinnon has probably had these guys eating nothing but kale <laughs> and, like, fucking yogurt and, like, I don't even know what else, some like carrots or some shit for the past two nights ever since I lost against Columbus here. I am 100% sure the Colorado comes out to beat the absolute piss out of Minnesota. Love them at minus 170. Probably be looking at them as a regulation play as well. I think that's a phenomenal bet. Um, we saw this matchup a couple, what was it, about a month ago or some shit like this? I think it was, like, it was a close game, like a 3-1 final or 2-1 final or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm leaning towards the under in this game as well. I think Julie, you just said it too. Gorgiev's been looking okay. Uh, Eustace Ananen, who they extended, he's been awesome. So I don't know who we're gonna get, probably Gorgiev for this game, but uh, so yeah, I like the under in this. And truth be told, what Grubauer, I don't know if Grubauer's gonna play or flurry, but Grubauer against Vegas the other night was absolutely lights out, so he's. He's kind of cleaning the ropes. It's a little sign of uh, a little too late, I guess. But still, he's playing well. So the under six is very enticing, plus 102. Um, I'm going to be looking for props as well. Like I feel like McKinnon's just going to be buzzing around this game. Uh, Avs in division games are 14-6-2, so a dominant record. And Minnesota is 8-11-3. So everything's pointing towards Colorado in this one. Absolutely love it. Uh, okay, let's move down to the 8 p.m. time slot. We have the... Calgary Flames, I am talking slowly, versus the Winnipeg Jets. Game itself is in Winnipeg here. Flames on the money line, sitting at plus 170. Jets on the money line, at minus 205. Winnipeg on the puck line, at minus 1.5, sitting at plus 130. Over-under, sitting at 6, over-paying off, minus 105. The under, minus 115 here. Uh, Jets playoff team should win this game. With that being said, they have been absolutely fucking horrendous as of late. Every time I watch them, they stink. Their record is 4-5-1 and one in the past 10, which isn't that bad. Yes, they're coming off a win against – who did they beat the other day? It was uh, Seattle? No, L.A., sorry, 4-3, tight one, close game. Um, you know what I really like in this game? I know Calgary has been kind of shit ever since the trade deadline. We talked about this before, 3-7-0 in their past 10. Uh, I don't hate the Flames on the uh, on the Cowgirl here, a plus 1.5, minus 155. I think you know they, they can keep this close. It's not so much of me having confidence in Calgary. It's more so me not believing in this Winnipeg Jets team. They do this every year. They, they dominate the first half of the year and then come close to playoffs. They just absolutely lay a fucking egg. Uh, so I love the Flames at plus one and a half, minus 155, over under in this game. Uh, if Markstrom is playing and we got Markstrom and Hellebuck, I'm going to lean towards the under. I know he hasn't been great since the deadline too. Jolie touched on that a couple of shows ago. Um, but also, if it's Dustin Wolf, I'm sorry. I, I, this might come back to back me or to bite me in the ass. And I've said this before. He's too goddamn small and he plays too small to be an NHL goalie. Um, so he's going to have to do something about that. If, if, we're, seeing, if we're seeing our boy. What's he going to do about it? Eat some steak? No, but you, no, you no, you play bigger though, right? Like he's too deep in his net. That's what I'm getting at. Um, you know, his legs. He needs to work on like his actual butterfly, like width and like strength and shit like that. These are goalie things, right? It's so and who? Snarls. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly though, like for real. At that point, you have to rely on your reflexes instead of your positioning because let's face it. You don't have positioning, man. So I don't know. But uh, if it's, like I said, if it's Wolf, I'm going to lean towards the under. If it is Markstrom, I will be, or sorry, Wolf the over. If it's Markstrom, the under. <laughs> Dilly out there. Uh, uh, put him on the limb stretcher. <laughs> like medieval medieval times. Let's go. Yeah. I want to preface this. I want to preface this to you. This guy is 5'11". Right? It's the same height as me, so you don't have to be like tall. Like, I say this like I'm in the fucking NHL or some shit. I'm not, but you look at these goalies in the league. They're fucking mutants they have in there. Look at Ryan. You got a six foot seven Russian in between the pipes. Even like nobody talks about it. Like, or you just, or you just look at Ryan. Or you just look at me. Or look yeah. at yeah, Ryan on his own. <laughs> exactly, right? But I'm sorry. That's just the way that the, the game's going here. If your goalie's not at like at least 6'3", six, 6'2", six, like – it's a deficit, so you have to make up for that. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but what we've seen out of Wolf at the NHL level, it just hasn't it hasn't clicked. So um, I'm just saying that it's a goalie thing. I don't fucking know. I'm not a professional, but that's just what I like to see. It definitely doesn't help though that the Flames traded away their their two best defensemen before really giving Wolf a shot here. So like, you know, get get an the NHL. They still have good guys, Uyghur, Anderson, Chillington there on one one pair each. But like, yeah, get a better defensive front of him. See see how he looks. He's still still a young kid there. But yeah, for this game, I can't trust the Jets minus two hundred five. Maybe Flames plus one seventy. 
bad loss against the Ducks last night. Uh, did beat the Kings after a, a six-game losing streak. Jets also had a six-game losing streak of their own before beating the Kings. So can't really play anything here. I guess I guess a lean to the under, but that definitely just depends on the goalie matchup. Yeah, I don't have any real feeling for the side here. The Jets finally getting a win after a six-game losing streak to the Kings there. Hard, hard fought campaign. It was good to see Cole Perfetti getting on the board twice. I mean, that's what happens when you give this guy a little bit of ice time. Like, uh, what the fuck mm-hmm. is Rick Bonus doing? Like, give this guy more ice time. Give Nikolai Bonus, Edith more ice I heard, time. Uh, I'm sorry, I heard Bonus is a big Tate McRae fan, so he just doesn't want anything to do with Cole Perfetti. So. <laughs> what what does that have to do? Who is Tate McRae dating? Or who did she yeah. date? Cole Perfetti. <laughs> no, it was it was Cole Sillinger. It's a different oh Cole. shit, my bad. Okay. I don't <laughs> get on get, get on your Tate McCray. I don't know gossip. this. Shit. Come on. I thought it was a funny joke, but I get I'm, my bad. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you were directionally <laughs> correct anyway. Um close <laughs> yeah. enough. Um yeah, big Cole Perfetti guy here, big Nikolai Elis guy here, but Rick bonus has got to get these guys, get the get more ice time, get get these guys on the power play, get the Get them on the top lines. Uh, they have uh, mm-hmm. a legit offensive potential, but uh, he's a very conservative coach, one of the most conservative coaches in the NHL. And it's fared well to his credit. The, the Jets are one of the best offensive teams in the league, but when it comes to producing points, which will happen, like um, you'll need those those offensive numbers in the playoffs for sure. Oh, the Leafs just tied it. Sorry, Tom. I'm, I'm, I'm behind, Joel. Fuck Why are you, you spoil it, Joel? You spoil it every, every fucking time. Do you have cable? Do you have actual cable? I have actual cable. Yeah. Well, then shut the fuck up. Why do you pay for this this fucking guy paying for cable? Yeah, exactly. You fucking loser. Uh, That that I hate that troll. That's that's awful. Come on. Whatever, man. Fuck off. Anyway, (laughs) Jets here. The Perfetti, Nikolai Ehlers. (laughs) These guys gotta get more ice time. It was was Matthews too. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Austin. Seven away from seventy. Two more. Two more for the Hattie. Seventeen to one. Let's fucking go. Mm. As long as he has more than Suzuki, Coffee, and Sapkowski combined, <laughs> including playoffs. <laughs> anyway, here. I uh, don't know how to play for the side. Give me the over six, though. Sneak you over in a Jets game. I think the way the Flames play will, will force the Jets to play a bit more offensively. Flames goaltending has not been up to par in the past few weeks. And, yeah, five, they just had a, like a five or six three game against the Ducks, the Ducks who can never mm-hmm. score. So I think the Jets can at least put three or four on them, and the Flames can score for themselves. So. I like the over six minus one of five best in this game. All right. What is uh, what does Tate McRae and Daryl Sutter have in common? Neither of them have Cole Perfetti's number. <laughs> that was funny. Remember when Sutter didn't know Perfetti's it, it, number? It wasn't Perfetti. It was what the gay. fuck? <laughs> Zero for two on Cole jokes. Oh for two. <laughs> oh, laugh, <laughs> laugh just scored your boy. Your boy, Tally. Love it, love it. I knew that, it was that, that's happen. a golden assist for him tonight. Exactly. At least someone's giving me some laughs. Um, <laughs> all right, let's move down to the 8 p.m. time slot here. We have the St. Louis Blues against the Nashville Predator. Game itself is in Nashville. St. Louis on the money line here sitting at plus 150. Preds on the money line at minus 180. Over under sitting at six. Over paid off minus 105. The under minus 115. Ryan, take this away from me. I just don't want to talk for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Which side to play here? I got a lot riding on Blues to miss the playoffs, so I need the Preds to win this one. Blues, I mean, they bounced back from a shutout loss to the Sharks with a win over Edmonton. Nashville's lost three in a row. You know, three, I guess, kind of tough opponents in Arizona and Colorado. Then at home against the Bruins, it was tied until the third period. I think they bounce back here, but minus 180 is a bit too steep for me. Um Provided that, that it's Bennington against, against Soros, I would go with the under six here at minus 115. Um, yeah, I could see like maybe a 3 3 overtime screwing that, but I think the under is a safe enough play here. I love the Predators in this game. Big surprise there. Of course, yeah, I don't, I'm not really sweating my Blues ticket to miss the playoffs because the Kings have like the easiest schedule in the world last, last little bit. I mean, it, it'll take a fucking miracle for the Blues to make the playoffs. So, not really concerned about that. But I just, I just think the Predators win this game comfortably. Given the, given the Predators in the puck line here, Blues, yeah, they get some elite goaltending for Bennington, especially in the past uh, half of the season. But yeah, Predators are. I mean, even that game against Boston was very even. Predators were probably a slightly better team in that one. And yeah, it was just, uh, I think it was swimming in net for the Bruins there. It just got the number. Unreal. With the shutout. Yeah. 
for sure. Right, right when I said the Bruins goaltending was going to shit, uh, Swayman just shoves it back in my ass. But mm-hmm. no, nah, like, uh, oh. I mean, I was on the Bruins that game, so I was happy about that one. But anyway, for this one, give me the Predators all day long. I think they win, they win this game comfortably. So minus one and a half, plus 145, money line, whatever you want to do. And uh, yeah, total can't make sense of it. I think it's six is about right. Dude, Austin Matthews shots on goal is electric. He already has three after the first. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I love the Preds in this. I know you look at them, you can be like, oh, three losses in a row. Are they slipping a little bit? What Jolie said, it, it rings true a lot, man. Like uh, That was an absolute war they were up against when, when they played the Bruins. I think it was like 2 nothing with like the last 10 minutes left in the third. Opened up a little bit then. Uh, Colorado's a good team. That implosion against Arizona, that that's un- inexcusable. I got nothing to defend that. But I think they bounce back here, man. If you look at division games, they're 14-8-1. Uh, playing against teams in the central here the blues are 10 12 and 1 so you know not as good significantly and the preds have been good at home this year man like 21 16 and 1 is fine blues haven't been great on the road um i love that underplay that ryan brought up too i think that's the way to look with biddington and Saros both been playing phenomenal hockey as of late at minus 115 but yeah i like the preds here minus 180 is a little bit juicy but i'm i'm okay with that uh let's get a win with nashville and get back on the, the w column here all right, final game on the docket. Let's move it. I don't. I hate that there's only one game, like late game. This kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. But uh, ten thirty p.m. time slot. We have the it's a LA good one, though. It's a good one. No, it's not. We have the LA Kings <laughs> against the uh, the San Jose Sharks. Game itself was in San Jose. Uh, LA on the money line, sitting at minus one thirty five. Sharks on the money line at plus one or two seventy five. Uh, Kings on the puck line, minus one and a half, sitting at minus one eighteen. Over under, sitting at six. Over pay now plus one hundred. The under minus one twenty here. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this one nice and simple. I like the Kings. I like the Kings on the puck line here, man. Uh, I look just off the top. Yeah, I know that they've lost their past three, and they've had a couple tight ones before that. But if you look at San Jose, I think, like, except for that game against Seattle. No, because even that one, the puck line hit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of their past nine, eight of their past ten get losses have been by two or more goals here. Um Think that this this team is washed, dude. Like, let's face it, it's an AHL caliber team at best. Um, up against a team that should be pushing for the playoffs and trying to play some good hockey right now. So I like the Kings. Yes, these California games have a funny way of sometimes keeping it kind of close here. Um, which is why I kind of lean towards the under in this game. Um, but I'll be taking the puck line for the Kings and probably a regulation play. Although regulation probably doesn't even pay off that good. So scratch that and then give me the under six at minus one twenty. Yeah, you got a, got a back-to-back here for the Kings. They're at home tonight against Seattle. I believe Talbot started that one. So we got Big Save Dave on, on Thursday on, yeah, Thursday night here in San Jose. I like the Sharks, plus one and a half there, around even money. Don't mind that at all. Sharks won in a shootout back in January in L.A. Talon said it. Kings have lost three in a row. This is going to be the sixth game of their road trip back-to-back. Uh so yeah, going to be tough for the Kings to, to get up here. Uh, Sharks will get up for this game against their rival at home. So, yeah, I like the Sharks plus one and a half around even money. And then sprinkle money line, too, plus 275. You could see them uh, upsetting the Kings here as the Kings free fall. This one kind of depends on how the Kings do today against the Kraken. Or, yeah, the Kraken. Because if they lose that game, they'll come up balls to the wall for this one. So that would make the Sharks a little bit less appealing. But... In a vacuum right now, ignoring that game, <laughs> give me the Sharks. Yeah, give me the Sharks. Plus 275. Uh, it's just too big of a number right now for the Kings to be laying. Uh, they win these close games all the time. They're not a great team. They're a good team, but they don't win these games by margin. So, yeah, the, the plus one and a half is okay. They could win like a close three two game, whatever. Yeah, plus 275, I think, is just a bit too much respect for the Kings. With the Sharks, like a, it's, it's still kind of a, a semi-rivalry game. Certainly not as, as big of a rivalry game as it was in the past. But, uh, yeah, it, it's minus 345 for the Kings is a, is far too much respect. So, it's Sharks and nothing right now. I did not bet this game. If the Kings lose today, maybe I'd be more f- uh, favored towards the Kings. But right now, it, it's Sharks or nothing. All right, that's it, boys. Uh, gentlemen, consensus plays. How are we looking? Wait, wait, wait. King Sharks under six, I think, is a good bet. That That's a good bet. We both said that, did we not? All right, well, I'm agreeing with you guys. That's a good bet. All All right. My voice uh, on the record. I don't think I touched on the total. I did want to say, though, Kings on a back-to-back are 3-6-2 and two this season. So mm. not, not too Ouch. great. Mm. 
It's not very royalty like. No. Not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, consensus prince. plays here. Consensus plays king. here. We have the uh, her prince, the prince hitter. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricanes minus 148, uh, Penguins minus 112, uh, Colorado minus 170, and then Predators, either puck line plus 145 or regulation or money line minus 180. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move into our lock dogs and totals here. Current standings, uh, myself, I have a record of 64 and 62, up 0. 0.5. The new points. leader. The new leader, baby. We're in the green. Thank you. Fuck. Uh, Joel in second here with a record of 61, 62, and 3, down 1.72 units. And Ryguy with a record of 55, 71, down 60.9 units. Uh, okay, uh, Ryguy, why don't you kick us off here and dive into this, buddy? Come on. Thank, let's get back you, on the horse. Our lock here is the Avs, minus 170 at the Wild. A bit juicy here, but you know, need to bounce back after that loss. Need to get a win here for, for myself and for the Avalanche. And my dog, I just switched it up. Give me the Sharks plus 275. Oh. Kings Kings on a back-to-back. Uh, I had a previous dog there. I just switched it up. So, what know, was it? I'm de- uh, I'm not going to say who it is now because because they're and they're going to win. It was 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 the Canadians. It was the Canadians at home against uh, Tampa? Well, they're not they're, they're not going to win. So don't Tampa's worry. on a back-to-back <laughs> too, though. So so who knows there? And then yeah, I'm 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 down 17 units. Let me let me get the big dog here, and then to- total Boston Carolina <laughs> under five and a half minus 105 should be a, a playoff like game there with a could very well see a three two overtime final. I respect I'll, that. I'll go next. Uh, yeah, Penguins tomorrow. Biggest bet of the month for myself. Penguins against the Capitals. I think they win this game comfortably, but yeah, we'll we'll do the money line here minus 112. That's still good and. Dog predators minus one and a half plus one forty five. Not super strong on this one, but uh, the Blues. I don't think that they're the real deal. The Predators need a win after three straight losses, and they're back in the mix to, you know, fearing for their playoff lives with how the Blues are pushing. So they need to put the Blues to fucking bed here, and I think they'll do that. Um, so yeah, give me the Preds by margin, and finally the total Avalanche Wild over six minus one twenty two. I think we'll see a high scoring affair here with the way the Avalanche play after their insipid performance against the blue jackets just getting one goal nothing going from the top line in that one i think we'll see uh bounce back here from mccarr and mckinnon in particular hell yeah uh for myself for my lock i'm taking carolina money line versus boston minus 148 canes are unreal at home here uh they've been playing some fantastic hockey eight one and one in their past 10 bruins have been a little up and down a little hit or miss um for my dog you know uh, this is a god game right like you know, God's had, God's had a tough look on Joel as of late, and it tends to happen during Lent, but Joel loves this game. I love this game a lot, too. So myself, Joel, and God are all riding on the Penguins. I'm taking them in regulation, plus 130 versus Washington. We're all going to be boozing. You know, God likes wine, and, you know, Joel likes whiskey, PBR, and I like beer. So we're just going to be having a good time watching this Pens game. Uh, and for my total- We don't like Washington, D.C., because we don't know no, what the fuck it means. No, it's not even a real place. <laughs> it's not even a place. It's not a... Is it? A, is there a star for DC on your little fucking flag there, Gilbert? Does it <laughs> have its own star? It, it's not a state, so no, it's a district. Okay, well, I. Then it's not even I, part of America, then. Yeah, it's not exactly. You know what? It's not even part of this world, but whatever. Uh, and for my total, I don't like doing this, but I'm going back to the same game here as my dog, Pittsburgh, Washington. I'm going the over six at minus one ten. I really like that a lot here, man. I think we see some goals, a little bit of regression from Lindgren as of late. I've just seen highlights of this line brawl. This is fucking wicked. Absolutely love it, dude. McDermott's a dog, eh? Like he's awesome. Um, <laughs> the only reason eight, why eight, eight devils... players were eight players were ejected there in like the first ten seconds. I'm not sure. I'm assuming everyone that fought. Truba, Miller, Rempe, McDermott, Bali, Marino, Tierney. Holy shit! Third period Coyle. over. His players Coyle just gassed. fucking juiced a guy from behind. <laughs> like, dude, why are we not watching this game right now? This is unreal. Holy shit! I love hockey so much, bro. Like this is unbelievable. Imagine if these. Imagine if New Jersey was good and these teams met in playoffs. That would have been sick. It was sick last year, man. It was. It yeah, was I know, but like now there's bad blood though, right? Because of all the rempe shit. Oh earlier. yeah, they'll, they'll probably meet again next year because the Devils will be back. Um, yeah, well, it's funny how the um, the the Tom Wilson, you know, he totally changed the trajectory of the Rangers. Like he he forced mm-hmm. the Rangers to go heavy after just like totally totally crushing them that one one series yep. or one one game, 
and uh, now we we have the Devils of the same kind of situation where they had to go get McDermott to uh, to to fuck off uh, with some of these other central teams. So uh, I like to see uh, good good bad blood in the Metro. The the sport it, it's we're in a beautiful place right now in hockey, man. We got you know there's the there's the stats and the analytics and all that's coming through, and it's 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 feasible. And there's the talent in the in the league that that goes along with that. And then there's the firepower, the physicality, and the violence. You know the other half like so everything this year has seemed to kind of blend together to make a beautiful plethora of uh, of entertainment i guess in the hockey community so we need some more rivalry still like the things are blossoming but we're not still there we're not yet we're not there yet hopefully things can continue to uh, i mean dude teams got... don't play each other enough to, to have rivalries no it's that's a good year, problem the the covid year when it was like the, the canada division the, the east division the, the, it was the same thing like that that's how you grow rivalries but also that's how like the league parody kind of separates so then you don't have every team playing every team so it kind of sucks you know what i was thinking about that the other day you're so right i was listening i'm not a big chicklets guy like i like it but uh darcy talker was on it the other day so i'm like okay i'm gonna check out that interview and he was talking about the playoff battle that the leafs had with the Sens in like 2002 and he was like yeah we played each other eight times in the regular season yeah. so by the time playoffs hit we were ready to go to war right and i think that's what it's missing the interdivisional kind of battles that we used to see like how else would we have a flyers devils rivalry to what it is today if we didn't have that interdivisional play you know mm-hmm. yeah why do we need to see two games between interconference opponents yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Like, do i care about the least it's, joel do either of us care about the least playing colorado no. like, i get it's a marquee matchup because they're two decent teams but like other than that do we that's really like in the top no. end too the, the better example yeah. is like the uh i don't know the the uh, the Blue Jackets playing the Ducks or some shit like yeah, that. Great exactly. point. We, we don't make, make that make that once rather, a year. Make it one year. Rather, at a time, one year in. in I'd uh, rather see the Ducks play the Sharks five times to be honest. At least those 100%. guys get after it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you go. Good. Especially because the pl- the playoffs are like division. It's not one through eight. It's it's in the division. Yeah. So add more yeah. division games. Hundred percent. Like if you're Pittsburgh, what the fuck do you care about like Minnesota or something like that? Right. Like who gives a shit? You know. Yeah. All right, boys. Anything else you want to add here? The, well, I think it's pretty oh, good. We, we, yeah, we had okay. a, a comment on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe there from a Peter Finn. He commented, first time seeing you guys after listening for months. You look much younger than I expected based only on your voices, except for Talon, exclamation mark. So I, I didn't realize that it could be a shark because he's Peter Finn. But yeah, mm. no, it's a, it's good there. Peter Forsberg, uh. probably. All right. Well, no, he's Swedish. So Peter Finn, I don't know. You know, that's a good one, too. Uh, all right, everybody. Here we go check out the Sports Gambling Podcast on the website. That's supposed to be tons of stuff in the world of sports. What do we got going on? We got hockey, nine games late tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely electric. Uh, Masters coming up next week. That's going to be fucking sweet for golf. Cannot wait for that. Uh, we'll talk about that maybe a little bit more next week before uh, before Thursday, and there will be tons of picks being posted in the Discord. You know what happens in majors, baby. It's we like to have some fun. Uh, basketball, playoffs. basketball playoffs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're right. Um, basketball playoffs are coming up. That's a thing too. They're they're. I haven't really heard much out of the world of basketball. I don't know, but March Madness. When does that? When does the Final Four do its thing? When's that happening? Saturday. Saturday, Saturday and the finals on Monday. Right on, man. So cool. Uh, that's doing all that stuff. Tons of stuff in the world of sports. Maybe you can find all the information at the SGPN website. Be sure to go check it out. Uh, check out all the articles that are being posted. Be sure to listen to the other shows as well. Everybody does a phenomenal job. Uh, and, of course, man, shout out to all of our friends and pals in the Discord. I haven't turned it on since we started recording, but I imagine there's some stuff going on in there. It's always a good time, always a good place with good people. And uh, and everybody tends to see each other's point of views in a, in a substantially <laughs> adequate way that doesn't frustrate anybody so hell yeah absolutely love the discord it's a, it's a great place to be if you want to get in there reach out to myself or ryan uh we should point you in the right direction on twitter we can hook you up or you can reach out to the hdp social media uh account on twitter social media assistant producer he'll get you going he's a killer that guy is awesome too um or what you can do is Shit, I got I got nothing. You know what you can do is just go to the big dick store. If you're at the big dick store, you're gonna be there with our big dick pal Joel Meyer and our social media assistant producer might even be there as well. So when these guys are sitting there with their nine inch hogs just looking at you know big boxers or something like that, you can be there too and you'd be like, Hey Joel, how do I get in the Discord? And he'll be like, So I couldn't hear you, my, my balls are too big, but uh uh yeah, but this is how you get in the Discord, baby. 
Uh, there's no such thing as a big dick store because once you get that big, uh, condos become meaningless. They, they, you don't even need them anymore because uh, you, you can get the best of the best of the options. You can. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Space is the best. <laughs> Whatever you want. What? You don't need them anymore. Like, <laughs> like, 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 Sarah, like, like you get once, all, you're, uh, once, once you're past this tall to ride, you don't get any infections or diseases yeah, down there. Ex like, exactly. No, you only get the you best don't need of the best. Anymore. I don't That's think he's about. worried about infection or disease. He just doesn't want any kids. <laughs> Can you imagine Joel as a dad? I think Joel would be a great dad. His son would know more about fucking Al Qaeda and the Gaza Strip than anybody else is than his fucking preschool. Right? <laughs> his kid Gross would never family. bet a fucking parlay. I, don't, I know that much. His kid would have a chart going about all stealing kids' milk monies in fucking school or something stupid like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. What do you got, Jolie? Anything? Any response? What are you going to say? Nothing? I got nothing, man. You guys, uh, you guys the fucking, pretty good. The, the sun is shining. In, in, in it is Vancouver, beautiful. Man. I know. Like, that always pisses me off. It. I've got these big cherry blossom trees in my yard. So we get all Aww. the Chinese and the, the white chicks just taking pictures of the trees all day That's long. That's hilarious. That's this time of year. <laughs> I got to chase them away. Get the fuck off my get property. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they got, they got me fucking drinking the PBR in my smoke. Yeah. Car. In the background, they're fucking taking pictures of the cherry blossom fucking trees. Fucking cherry blossoms. <laughs> yeah. Get an HTP flag up there. Get some, get some free advertisement. Oh, yeah, shit. That's not the only flag they'll see. Oh, I bet sure. not. You, f oh, we're not going to get into that one. All right, everybody. My name is Tyler Jenkins. You can find me on Twitter at Tyler underscore Jenkins 94. I'm Ryan Gilbert. You can follow me on Twitter at R Gilbert S O P. And I'm Joel <laughs> Mine. You can find me. <laughs> Big fan of John Tortorella. That guy really uh, yes. got oh. on our good side back again today. That was a great, great press. He doubled down, but at the same time, he rallied the troops. That's an yes, absolute perfect coach, an absolute deserving, worthy, worthy, worthy candidate for the Jack Adams. If he wins the Jack that. Adams, I'm going to be so pissed because my bets got voided, but I'm going to be so happy as well. <laughs> Didn't they are they they vote for that with like ten games left in the season? It's already been voted upon, hasn't it? No. No, I'm pretty it's, sure I think it has. It's after playoffs. I don't yeah. think so, no, man. I double checked. Game that. 82, not, that's when they go in. Like, I don't think so. I crazy. think they do it at game 72. So somebody confirmed that. But at the I end of the think... regular season, it says. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Well, according to Wikipedia, and Wikipedia never lies. You can definitely oh, use Wikipedia. For I your don't high know. Papers. Dude, I didn't even do my paper. I made a lot of NBA awards bets in the past week, by the way. So we'll get into that in the next two shows. All right. Hell yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.